Hello, my good people from all over the world, wherever you are always interested in listening to Preventive Health Education. It is the same program that I've always loved, Dish of Life Extra. And I'm your host, the regular host, Dr. Semiu Ola Golden. Today, we're going to discuss halitosis. What is halitosis? And why is it a secret that no one wants to discuss? This is the most covered ailment that is known by everybody, but nobody wants to talk about it. It occurs in most of us either for a short time or for a longer time because no one wants to be associated with it. Everyone tends to be mute about it. The secrecy is the reason why people don't know that they have it and their inability to seek for solution for it. Ironically, no one is spared of it, ranging from the rich to the poor, from the white to the black men and other colored races. Due to the ubiquitous nature of the germs that reside in various parts of our body as part of our own ecosystem, everyone has temporary problems with it. Hence, our daily rituals of trying to distance ourselves from it by cleaning and clearing with all sorts of chemicals and non-chemical alike. Before I tell you what it is, I want to give you one assurance that is if you have it stop being ashamed of it as you now know that more than 75 to 80 percent of human beings have it from one spectrum to the other you can be rid of it if you make a little more effort to do the things i will tell you about it so what is halitosis and why is it that most people don't want to talk about it except they have some affinity or love for the person who has it that's the only time you get somebody telling you, oh, you have so-so thing. Halitosis is mouth order. For someone to tell you about it, you must be close indeed to that person. And for you to even accept it, it is something of great, great courage. However, this need not to be so, as this ailment usually gets pronounced in us due to negligence of simple body hygiene. Most people who have mouth order have bad habit of not watching what they eat, and when they eat them. Second habit is that of not watching what type of digestive system they have. Finally, the time to eat and when not to. These are the negligence that brings about mouth odor that most people have. The odor from the mouth is as a result of germs of different types that colonizes our mouth, esophagus, upper part of our stomach too. This odor is cumulative. That is one thing meeting the other at the same place due to non-digestive products. These digestive products will eventually get rotten and whose offensive odor from the inside out. That is from inside of us, outside. For those who have what is termed as patented lower end of esophagus and upper part of the stomach, the odor from the undigested food but heavily infected remnant usually goes out backward from the stomach to the throat and eventually when you speak out it comes out forcefully through the voice box the voice box that is open to produce word need the air from inside of us and as this air is being forced out it comes along with the odor that are offensive due to the undigested and infected broken down food most of this type of sufferers could have peptic ulcer especially stomach ulcer due to slow digestion or maldigestion of the food eaten. Others are those whom when they eat think that washing mouth after eating does not allow the taste of the food to linger on in their mouth so that they can savour the taste of the food they've just eaten. This type of people don't even need to talk before the other hooses out. They only need to open their mouth for anyone near to them to perceive that other. The late night eaters are the worst sufferers because they eat late and find it difficult to even wait or remember to brush the remnant of their food in their mouth away from their teeth before jumping onto the bed to sleep. So even when they have natural good digestion, the rate of digestion is slower during sleep. So it is given more time for the fermentation of such food and eventual bad odor to start who's in there from. 
other group of people are those who drink lots of sugar laden drinks alcohol especially when they drink it late and of course sleep off while they have taken the drink and they fail to clean their mouth shortly after such drinks there are simple ways of getting out of the nightmare if you want to but let me tell you something today a story of mouth odor called halitosis was a story that needed to be told so that if you are in this same situation i'm going to tell you you can actually resonate with what you're going to hear i as your presenter have had my own part of mouth order before and i had to do a lot about it before i got rid of it i had to go into a lot of researches by different you know scientists all over the world i've had to start noticing what i do and how i do it i started finding out what can cause this and how we can get out of it because i was a victim i decided that this thing must go by all means a lot of people advise me on different type of chemicals that i could use they advise me on different type of sweets that i could be leaking but all these end up giving me worse situation because i found that those who use this chemical to wash their mouth it doesn't last long before the others start coming back and the reason is very simple our mouth is you know full of different types of germs that are competing that are good germs and that are bad germs the good germs the moment you are able to remove part of the bad germs then your mouth start getting dry because the good germs make you to produce the sputum that lubricates your mouth so by the time you use the chemical either chemical sweet or chemical chingum or chemical whatever you are only helping your mouth to start creating divide and rule so if you are lucky to have some of the bad germs removed the good germs start becoming bad because they want to balance the equation in order to make that area to be friendly for all of them because if you remove the bad germs that are responsible for lubricating your mouth then your mouth will begin to dry and even the good germs will not have good place to stay so what can be done this was the beginning of the research that brought about a lot of you know insight into how mouth odor can be conquered i'll be it with so much of you know relief and it's not stressful even to do what you ought to do in order to get it out of your system you see sometimes we look at problems the way they are and we help the problem to become bigger problems one of the things that we do to encourage problem to become bigger problem is hiding the problem from people who have solution to it two listening to too many cooks that will spoil the broth because somebody will come and say oh yes somebody used to have me they use this thing blah 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 but he who is telling you doesn't even know what he's talking about he has never had it before so how could he have known how it feels and how could he have known how it is to remove it my brothers and sisters i tell you if somebody tells you he wants to change your clothes for you please look first of all as the one he is wearing because if somebody says going to buy you new clothes and he's wearing rag, I don't know how he wants to change your clothes for you unless he's going to give you new rag. Now, as I was saying, I have been a victim. I have been through it. In actual fact, I had a good person who was so close to me for me to realize it. A lot of people don't know they have halitosis. A lot of people go around with halitosis, but their close friends are afraid to tell them. And because they don't tell them, they too, they don't know about it. So it's about time people start talking about halitosis, talking about mouth order, because we are allowing people to let us waste our money for what is not necessary. They now create all sorts of things to eat, to drink, to swallow, to smoke, in order to remove mouth order, because all of us are afraid to talk about it. All of us are making a secret that shouldn't be let out. We are ashamed of letting people know we have it. Or we are even ashamed of accepting that we have it. These are our major problems. 
And when such problems is assailing us, it always end up to become bigger problem for us. So this is the reason why I, I decided to bring it up and let you understand that it is nothing to hide. We have more than 75 to 80 percent of people in the world who have halitosis, who have mouth odor. The difference is that each person tries to do one thing or the other to, you know, try to make people believe, no, no, I don't have it, or it is going. To, they just, you know, modify it in a way that they cover it up one way or the other. But you, if you are not rich enough to be able to waste your money on those they are covering emollients, then you need to be on this program to be able to know how to go about it so that in a short time i'm talking about short as one week you can be rid of mouth order you can be rid of it without even having it again all you just need to do is stick with what removes it from you and once you are stuck with it then you know that you have actually won the battle but if you don't stick to it there's a tendency for you to bring it back because there are lots of things that are attached to your not wanting it to come back. You can imagine being in a gathering of people who are there to listen to what you want to say. Probably you went for an interview or you went for a presentation where you have to sit with different type of people and everyone was just turning his head to one side or the other whenever you want to speak with them it can be very embarrassing but most of them will not tell you why they are turning because they want to save you the embarrassment but why can't you find out if you have it yourself so let's do a little exercise to find out if we have mouth order or not the first thing you do is get a white handkerchief neat white handkerchief and then when you are want to sleep at night breathe into that handkerchief as in open your mouth and make onto the handkerchief and fold that handkerchief and put it in a place where you know it can be you know covered very well if possible if you have a big bottle or a big container put it inside that big container and you know screw it close and keep it in the morning get the second white handkerchief don't brush your mouth yet. Breathe into it again and close it up for probably 10-15 minutes. Then bring both of them out. If any of them changes color, whether somebody tells you you have it or not, you have it. Whether you know you have it or not, you have it. So it's not a matter of wanting to go and meet somebody and say, Hey, excuse me, ah, do I have mouth order? No, you don't have to do that. That will even bring embarrassment that you want to avoid. So that's the first one you can do. The second one for those who can still do it is to do the same thing into water. In a cup of water, clean water, breathe into it and cover it. If it is in the night, you do that, cover it until the morning. If it's in the first thing in the morning before you brush your mouth, just cover it for 10, 15 minutes, then open it. When you see that water, changes from what you have seen it to be clean water to any other color don't worry about the color it can be black it can be green it can be yellow depending on what you ate overnight then you know you have it but if you have a close confidant like your wife or your husband your very close friend even you know people that you know that can will not you know use it to abuse you you can easily just ask them please i want to you know open my mouth and speak i want you to tell me if I have mouth order. That is very sincere enough if that person is close to you. So for such people, you can always ask them. They will tell you the truth. And when they tell you the truth, now it is time for you to now get going about it. Otherwise, then you are the one that have created more problem for yourself. If I say I'm going to start telling you how to do this exercise and how to go about removing it this week, we will not have enough time. But so this it is to say one or two, because we still have a short time to tell you about it. I will tell you one or two things you can do. The first thing you should do is that learn to brush your mouth at least twice daily with mostly toothpaste that are full of naturally occurring cleaners. 
like clove, turmeric, and so on. Not with all this chemical, you know, toothpaste. For those who use chemical toothpaste, there's nothing wrong with it. They want their tooth to be stronger because it contains, you know, all sorts of chemicals. That's no problem. But for you who have mouth odor, you need to look for pastes that are with naturally occurring cleanser. I'm just giving you an example of clove or turmeric. Make sure it is done at least twice a day. The second one which I will give you before going is not that, you know, uh, even difficult. Learn to clean your mouth as soon as you finish eating any food. I repeat that word. Any food. Because you might think that, oh, I just drank, you know, a bottle of something. Or I just ate, you know, probably a granite. Anything that you eat or drink, wash your mouth. Squish water in your mouth and pour it out at least three times. By the time you do that, you'll be reducing the possibility of the remnant of the food or the, the content of the drink from becoming, you know, fermented and bringing jams who are already waiting. Every one of us, we have colonies of jams in our mouth, in our throat, in our stomach. The only thing that reduces the stomach one is because our stomach is highly acidic. But every other thing you are going to hear from next week. Just keep a date with this program. And by the time I tell you all the things that you need to do, which don't even cost you anything, you will be free for life of halitosis called mouth odor. And when you observe what we'll be talking about, there will not be this chemical here, that, you know, twin, twin, you know, thing here, that uh, twin one chemical or leaking one chemical. No. They will all be the things that you can do that are within the average person or even the lowly person as long as you are stuck to it and follow what I would call the routine of what we're saying. For the first two that I've just told you today, I want you to just try it pending the next week when we are going to discuss fully about the other parts of what to do in order to get rid of halitosis. So it has been me, Dr. Semi Ola Golden, I have been talking to you today about halitosis called mouth odor, which has been one of the greatest things that virtually everybody has, but it's secret. Nobody wants to discuss it. Because of that, many people don't get solution to it. And today, I'm giving the solution to you all free so that you can get rid of it yourself and you can remove the embarrassment that it has been causing you. But if you are really, really interested in taking all of them down and knowing what and what again you can do to join to what I've just told you, the first two, the things you'll do, there are about 10 different, you know, things to do, which you can do on daily basis, on weekly basis, and it will not change your routine in life. These are the things that I want you to do. And when you do them, you will be very, very proud of yourself when within a week or two, somebody whom whenever you are talking before will start sidestepping, will stop sidestepping from you. And those who have been hiding their own under chewing one thing or the other, please, they will not help you. They will continue to degenerate your system because the mouth order is just expression of what is going on inside. It's the expression of your body getting really destroyed because of those germs that you are feeding and making to colonize more and invading your system. Until I come your way again, it has been me, Dr. Semi Ola Golding, saying, keep fit and keep well. Bye and God bless.